Today, I'll be going over how to improve security on Linux. Now, Linux is already a pretty secure operating system. However, there are some things you can do to improve the security of your Linux installation and harden it even more, especially considering that on the desktop side, Linux gets a lot of its security through obscurity, meaning that because there aren't nearly as many Linux users as there are on Windows or even Mac, and most Linux users are tech savvy, there just simply aren't as many hackers and malware that target Linux desktop. However, on the server side of things, because Linux is very common on servers, Linux servers are actually a prime target for hackers. Now, although this video is going to be focusing on Linux servers, you can take most of these points and apply them to a desktop Linux distribution. All right. So now the first and most important point that I'm going to make is make sure you are up to date all the time. I cannot stress this enough. Updates patch security vulnerabilities. So at the bare minimum, stay on top of your security updates. In fact, one of the reasons why Linux is regarded as more secure than Windows or even Mac OS is because it's open source, meaning that the source code is publicly visible and You've got developers from all over the world looking at the code for bugs, including security vulnerabilities. So security vulnerabilities generally get found pretty quickly and patched pretty quickly once they're found. If you're on Debian or Ubuntu or any of its derivatives, you can check for updates by doing a sudo apt update. And look at this, we've actually got four packages to update. So let's do a sudo apt upgrade to get these installed. And by the way, if you're on a desktop, you can obviously go to your package manager and then to updates and update from there. And vanilla Ubuntu will actually have its own update manager called software updater. So you can install updates graphically from there. Now, if you want to automate this process, you can configure automatic updates by doing sudo nano slash etc slash apt slash apt.conf.d slash 50 unattended upgrades. And by default, the security updates will be uncommented, but what I would do is uncomment everything except for proposed, which are essentially beta updates, but this will make it so that way updates will be downloaded and installed automatically, but it won't automatically reboot by default. If you want your server to reboot automatically, come down to this line, unattended upgrade automatic reboot, uncomment that, and then change the false to true. And you can also set at the time that you want it to automatically reboot, say at two in the morning, when your server is not being used or you're just not expecting tons of traffic. But then we can save and close this file and then do a sudo system CTL restart unattended upgrades to restart the unattended upgrade service to make sure that our changes are actually applied. And this obviously only applies to Debian Ubuntu and their derivatives. If you're using some other distro, then unfortunately the steps to do this will be different. If you're on Ubuntu desktop, you can open the software and updates application or software sources application, not to be confused with software updater. And then you can set your security updates to be automatically installed without confirmation. And another thing you can do to make sure that security vulnerabilities get patched out between reboots, even for those security updates that require a reboot to be fully applied, is set up live patching. If you're on Ubuntu, 
to Ubuntu has its own live patch service. Just go to ubuntu.com and then sign in to your account. Now, if you don't have an account on ubuntu.com yet, you'll need to make one for this. But once you're signed in, just go to your Ubuntu Pro dashboard and then it'll load up your subscriptions page and then it'll give you a command that you can copy and paste into your server and that'll set you up on Canonical's live patch service which is free for up to five machines. Now this isn't really necessary for a desktop environment but it is a good thing to have for a server which has to be up and running basically around the clock. So now let's look at securing your SSH and the best way to do that is Instead of using passwords, use key-based authentication. And I'm going to show you how to set that up. So first of all, you need to make a SSH key. And I'll just pop over to my desktop terminal to show you how to do that. So basically, you just type ssh-keygen in your terminal. And then it'll generate a key pair. And then It'll give you a file in which to save the key. The default is fine. And then set a passphrase on it. And there you go, now your key is saved. So now what we need to do is get our public key. To do that, just go to your SSH folder. And then your IDRSA is your private key. That stays on your computer. It's your IDRSA.pub that we need. And that's your public key. That's what actually goes onto your server. Just copy this whole thing. And then what you're going to do is do mkdir tilde slash dot ssh and then nano tilde slash dot ssh slash authorized underscore keys and then paste in your public key, then save and quit the file. So now we can test if our key-based authentication works by logging out and then logging back in. And then it should say, enter passphrase for our key. If it does, then you're successful. We can log in with the passphrase that you've set up on your private key. Now we're gonna do a sudo nano slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config punch in our password and then come down to password authentication uncomment this line then change the yes to no and then that'll disable password authentication to make sure that you can only log in with an authorized key like that's the most secure way to do it and while we're in our SSH configuration. Another good thing to do is disable root login, like completely block that from SSH. Just uncomment permit root login and then replace peripid password to no. And then that'll make it so that way our root account is not exposed over SSH. And this is very important because the root account, also known as the super user, is what has access to everything and absolutely everything on our Linux system. Basically, if a hacker gets into this account, game over. And the root account is the obvious target, which is why you do not want that exposed over SSH. In fact, I would even consider disabling the root account entirely and then just running your administrative commands with sudo, and that'll allow you more granular control over who has administrator privileges. To do this, first of all, we gotta save and exit our SSH configuration, and then do sudo passwd-l root, and that'll lock the root account. Now, before you do this, make absolutely sure that you have at least one non-root user with full pseudo privileges. Otherwise, you're gonna have a system without any way to do administrative tasks. And I would suggest that this user, as well as 
any user with pseudo privileges and also any user without pseudo privileges on your system for that matter have a non-generic username such as your name or the name of the user and not something generic like admin or tech as those are also obvious usernames for a hacker to go after. So now if you're on Ubuntu server then in order to fully disable password authentication you will also need to run sudo rm slash etc slash ssh slash ssh d underscore config dot de slash 50 cloud init dot conf because that file contains a password authentication yes line that overrides the password authentication no line that we put in our regular sshd config and then we can apply our changes to our ssh configuration by doing sudo system ctl restart ssh so while i'm on the subject of ssh let's talk about services in general and my advice is have as few of them as possible the more services you have open to the outside world the greater your attack surface is. So make sure you're only running what you actually need to have running. And this can be applied to even just desktop applications as well, even if they're not open to the internet. Because most hacks and malware work by exploiting some weakness in the code of a particular program or operating system, meaning that the more programs you have installed, the greater your attack surface is. And this is especially true for a server, which is going to have services that are open to the whole network or possibly even to the open internet. Remember that an open port is only as secure as the application that's behind it. Now, here's another piece of advice from the don't have what you don't need department. And that is don't have user accounts that you don't need on your system. And for those user accounts that you do need, do they need pseudo privileges? Only give pseudo privileges to those users that actually need it. Because the more logins you have on your server, especially ones with pseudo privileges, the greater your attack surface is. So remove users that you don't need and take away administrative privileges for users that don't actually need them. To take away pseudo privileges from a user, just do sudo del user and then the username name sudo. Now make absolutely sure that the sudo is in the command as if this part is not here. Well, you could probably guess what's gonna happen it's gonna delete that user account entirely, which you probably don't wanna do unless it's a user account that you know for sure you don't need, in which case I would probably suggest just delete that user. And even on a desktop, you can look at your user accounts from the system settings and see which accounts have administrator privileges and which are just standard users. The only user account I have is me because that's the only user account that I actually need on my personal computer. And while I'm on the subject of user management, another good thing to do for an enterprise is enforce password complexity. To set password complexity policies, just do sudo nano slash etc slash pam dot d slash common password. And then here you can set password complexity policies. And I'll leave a link to an article that goes over how to do that in the description. Another thing you can do is temporarily ban logins for a user if there are too many failed password attempts. To do this, just do sudo nano slash etc slash security slash fail lock dot conf. Now you will need to have the fail lock module installed, which if you're using Ubuntu, it comes pre-installed. And 
Basically, you can uncomment these lines and tweak this file to your needs, depending on your use case. And coming back to managing services that are open to the network, another good thing to do is use a firewall on your server. This will allow you more granular control over what you have open to your network, and also, by extension, the open internet. Now, Ubuntu Server has a firewall called UFW installed by default, but it's not enabled by default. To enable it, just do sudo UFW enable. Okay, so now firewall is inactive and enabled on system startup. So now, in order to allow a port, just do sudo UFW allow the port number, in my case, 22 for SSH, or whatever port you have your SSH on, if you prefer to put it on a different port. And you can also specify the protocol by doing slash, and then the protocol, in this case, TCP, because SSH uses TCP. If you're opening a port for an application that uses UDP, then you would do slash UDP. But in this case, I'm gonna do slash TCP and enter. There you go, and now the rule is added. And then if you want to look at what ports you have open, just do sudo ufw status numbered. And then that'll show you the ports that you have open. In this case, I only have port 22 for SSH. And then if you want to delete an open port rule, just do sudo ufw delete, and then the rule number, one or two. Now you will need to do this for both the v4 and the v6 rule. But even on a desktop, a firewall is a good thing to have. If you're on Ubuntu, you can get GUFW as a graphical front end for UFW. It'll be called firewall configuration in the software center. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about physical security and specifically about encryption. So now, Ubuntu and many other distros do offer the option to set up full disk encryption on installation if you erase the whole disk, and it might be under advanced features or something like that. But if you select use LVM, then you will get an option to encrypt the new Linux installation, or in this case, Ubuntu. Basically, you just hit OK, install now and then it'll prompt you to set up a passphrase which will be requested on every boot in order to decrypt the drive. Of course, this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't mention AppArmor and SC Linux. Now, these are basically mandatory access control systems for Linux. And what these do is basically allow you to set up security profiles so that way users and applications only have access to what they absolutely need to. For example, instead of a PDF viewer having access to everything your user has access to, it might only have access to what a PDF viewer actually needs to have access to. A similar principle is applied in the confinement of a snaps and flat packs, which are containerized packaging formats for Linux. Now, both of these are very complex tools that are very use case specific. For most desktop users, you don't even need to touch these. And even if you're just running a home server, but if you're managing an enterprise, then yes, this might be something that you might want to look into. And I'll have links to documentation for both of these in the description. But a couple important differences to note between these two tools is that AppArmor is for Ubuntu, whereas SE Linux is for Red Hat and Fedora. And AppArmor is the simpler one to configure of the two. But again, both SE Linux and AppArmor are very complex tools that are very use case specific. But anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.